Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to start on a bed build. This video particular, alert, partic I don't know why I try to use big words. In this video specifically, we're gonna be focusing on the frame, what I did for the frame. Throughout this whole bed build series, I'm going to try to share what I would do differently because here in a minute, you'll find out that the way that I'm going about building this bed is totally different than the two beds that I've built for myself previously. This is a customer's project. They actually did not ask for some of the things that I did, but I took advantage of this opportunity to try some things that I've thought about over the years, how I would do my next bed differently. So just wanted to let you know that throughout this video series of this bed build, I will be trying to share with you where I messed up, what I did differently, because with custom fabrication, whenever you go to do something, or at least for me, sometimes I have to see it done before I can find out a better way of, of how I should have done it, if that makes sense. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for being here. If you're new around here, check out our website, arosswelding.com for helpful resources, a few welding products, etc. Here it is, the next project. You might be asking, Austin, do you recommend unhooking the battery when welding on a pickup? My answer is yes. It's just a habit with any truck. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it don't. Actually, whenever I worked at that steel supply for three years right after high school, we welded on a lot of different trucks and equipment and stuff, and that was just our practice. It's kind of like a liability, you know? It's a source of insurance. Whether it's gonna mess it up or not, just unhook the battery. It's a good practice. So I literally unhooked both batteries on this diesel, this Ford 2022 Ford diesel, both connectors here and both connectors here. And then I actually put some welding caps in between just to insulate it, if you will. All right, so I've been doing a lot of thinking about how I wanna do this. I've crunched my brains making stuff hard. That's what I like to do is make stuff hard. The two beds that I've built previously, the one that's on my truck now and on the uh, white truck that I had before, what I had done was, I think, I believe I ran three inch channel this way, right on top of the truck frame. So three inch channel, three inch channel. And then up here I ran three inch channel, but then whenever I got to the, about right here, roughly I put four inch channel, so my trunk would be deep enough, and for other reasons also. But when I got to looking at this Ford, the frame is different, and all the bolt holes are down, versus being able to bolt this way, because like on my truck, I bolted, uh, which it looks like I could put a bolt right here if I wanted to. Anyway, since the frame is a little bit different on the Fords, I've been racking my brains, and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to run these members that I've got sitting here. I got some two inch tubing, some one by two tubing, but only because of the space I had here, I needed it to be a little bit more narrow, but I still got two inches right here and two inches right here. So I'm going to put one, two, three, two inch risers, if you will, to get the main frame up above the filler neck and this right here. And then I'm going to run four inch channel. I was actually going to use two by four, three sixteenths rec tubing, but they didn't have any. The four inch channel is actually a little bit cheaper, so that's a good thing. But anyway, I'm going to run, I'm going to take and run that piece of four inch channel from this piece of flat all the way to the back, past the back of the frame, however far I think I need it. I'll, I might even run it wild here at first to kind of do some thinking. And then once I have that all set up here, I'll be able to kind of visualize what else I want to do. The reason I've been overthinking it is because in my opinion, I've had more than enough skeleton. In other words, these the three inch cross, the three inch piece of channel that I ran across here and, and back here, whenever I was cutting in my lead wells and my fender wells, my toolboxes, there was always a cross member in the way. And really and truly, by the time you get your inner skirt and your outer skirt all put on and your box is all built, you really don't need any of that extra, you know, skeleton, you know, your main frame like you would on a, on a flatbed because there's so much that you're boxing in on a welding bed. In my opinion, you don't really need all that. So the reason I was overthinking it is because I was trying to do as little as possible sticking out, which is, as you can see, I only made these 42 inches long. And then once I put my four inch channel on here, that will allow me to have something to weld to. That's what I finally had to come to in my head was like, Austin, just get something on here, bolt it on, and then you will have something to weld to. 
So if I need to come out with a cross member for like the fender or something, I can always weld to that four inch channel something to, but I can put them where I want them. I don't have to be exactly where the bolt holes are on the bed, if that makes sense. So that's where we're at. We've got our two inch tubing here. I'm cutting some two by two angle, or I've already cut them all. I'm actually drilling some holes now and uh, we'll weld them to here. Actually bolt them, get everything square and then tack them and then uh, cut our four inch channel to put on top. So I've just got two inch by two inch, quarter inch thick angle. I come in an inch and an eighth here just to get away from the sidewall a little bit because this will be like here and my two inch square will be back here and my hole will be here to run a bolt down. do some thinking. got half inch spacers here in the back made a universal drop out of three by three by quarter inch angle uh, 27 inside by 57 inside correction we've actually got 58 inches from inside to inside and then we've got 27 inside dimension this way should hold an SA 200 frame as well as uh, like a Miller Oh, 400 should hold both of those. Obviously, the SA200 or machine like mine would be, you know, there would be some space, quite a bit of space really, but Universal notched out the four inch channel, come down. So this would set flush with the rest of the deck. I'll end up coming in back here with another piece of four inch channel right on top. That way my trunk will be deep enough. I need about seven inches deep to hold jack stands, but it'll end up being roughly eight inches, which would be great. I haven't decided how far I'm gonna bring it up, but I do think I'm gonna do some type of angle down 
action just so it's not 90 i just i don't know i think it'll look a little better like so got to decide what fenders i'm going to use before i can get too carried away because that'll determine how far out i come with my um, i think i'm going to use some two inch square tubing and come out somewhere up here and then i don't know yet i'm going to come out in random spots depending on where i think i need a brace somewhere in this vicinity because I'm going to get an inner fender rolled that way mud hits that fender it doesn't get on the bottom of the boxes and whatnot uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do that's what I've done in the past anyway but and I think I'm going to use 12 inch 90s and trim them back on my truck I used 10 inch but see how they don't come down very far I don't really like that if i remember right i definitely trimmed some off of it but that's because 10 inch was too narrow if i've come on down it would have been into my tires and luckily this fella don't plan on putting oversized tires like i did so 10 inch might work uh but that's what i haven't decided but anyway talk on that later we'll decide all that but uh yeah coming right along all right, so carrying on with the frame, as you can see over there, I've ran me a piece of two square three sixteenths flush with this four inch channel out to almost the outside of our body line, but I left about a quarter inch uh, just to account for the panel that's going on here. I got that side tacked up now. And do this side. Don't delay. Been listening to old Garth Brooks. Old Garth. Old Garth. My aunt danced with Garth Brooks. You know, we live here in Oklahoma, and Garth Brooks is from somewhere in Oklahoma, and I think she said she danced with him at uh, the Tumbleweed in Stillwater, Oklahoma, because he used to play there. Oh, Darth. Oh, Darth. I got a piece of two square up here just to make sure that everything stays. I'm using it as a jig. I clamped it here to this four inch just to, you know, make sure it wasn't moving around over there while I'm down here. You know, I don't need it moving around. And then I took a clamp here and now it's holding my piece that I'm fixing to tack. And uh, now I've got me a square, and I got my little fabrication cart with my hammer. Need to go that way a touch. Check the back side. Oh wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty close. I'm gonna go just a little over. That way, whenever I tack it, it will. Uh, it's gonna pull, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm accounting for the pull. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, auto darkening lens didn't go dark. So now I'm seeing a spot. All right. Now I can take this clamp off, put a little old tappy tappy here, do that number, oh man what's wrong with this thing, I ain't charged up, you know these uh, auto darkening lenses are supposed to, they're solar powered, so in other words how they get charged is the sun or I believe the welding art charges them also. So I guess I haven't welded with this particular lens in a while. So it is not charged and I'm paying for it. All right, hindsight's 2020. Uh, I should have just notched this, notched it out, and put one continuous piece back there because now I, I just, after I got them tacked on, I'm like, oh, I need a piece right there would have been so much cleaner just to go 
but I can definitely do it up there. I lay one of these fire blankets, notch it out, but I've already cut up my, I've already cut the piece off of this. In other words, I don't have any enough material, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cope it in there. It's kind of a nod to, you know, there's several different ways to skin a cat or whatever, several different ways to go about things. So what I'm gonna do will work just fine structurally, especially for this, but it's not the simplest way. So just so you're aware. I'm just lining up the inside of this channel with the outside of my tube. And I'm also making the top of my four inch template here flush with the top of my square tubing. This is why I love custom fabrication because you learn how to do things. Because even though I figured a simpler way, for one, I learned a simpler way, pay attention next time, but for two, you learn uh, you know, in this case, how to cope uh, two inch square tubing. Preheat. Fast but steady. Fast but steady. Oh, 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 hot potato. Hot potato. You know what I messed up on that I should have known better, but it's been a while since I've done anything like this. Whenever I pulled my measurement over there, I left some wiggle room for my longest measurement because we're going up and underneath our flange here of our channel. I left some wiggle room, so there's going to be a gap there, most likely, so I'm going to have a gap here, but what ifs. So to eliminate that gap that we had up here, next time, instead of just pulling a measurement from the inside of our four inch channel here, I will also pull a measurement from the inside also, but like the, the uh, up here where it's flush because we've got a roughly an inch and a half lip right here. So I pull my measurement from in here to the inside of the other one. Next time I'll pull a measurement from here to the same thing on the other side. That way I can check my measurement up here on my square tubing. That way it fits a lot better. There again, I make a mistake, we both learn. Bada, bada bang, bada boom. Yeah, see, little old gapper. Just split the difference, and then uh, take her off. Got my old squirt gun on tack mode, which just means hot, but it's not ideal for these little gaps. But if I don't have a gap, it's good to have it good and hot. That way, tacks don't break. The old bridge, come on, the old bridge tack. So the main thing that I learned on this frame of this bed build was 
to, like I said earlier, what I had to finally do rather than overthinking it was just get something bolted down, whether it was long ways, cross ways, whatever, just get something bolted down, that way you have something to weld to. I think, or at least in my mind, that was the simplest way that I could simplify it when trying to help others like yourself, is when you go to build a bed, don't overthink it. I mean, you can look at, it's always good to look at, you know, a flat bed or any other bed to kind of see what they did. That's obviously the best thing we can all do that we've all done when you go to build a bed. But to simplify it, for me anyway, whenever you're trying to do something custom like this, to simplify it, I just had to think to myself, just get something bolted down so you have something to weld to. Uh, I kind of look at it as like a clean canvas or whatever, you know, like a clean slate. Just get something bolted down and then just start fabricating to those main members that you've got bolted down. Another thing to keep in mind with custom beds like this when you're building it onto the truck is your bolt holes. Making sure you can access your bolt holes because when you bolt them down first and then you start building around it, it's easy to cover up what you've, you know, your bolt holes. So that's something that I've kept in mind throughout this whole bed build is to make sure I could access all the bolts that I've bolted to the frame of this truck. Thanks for being here. If you're new around here, check out our website, arosswelding.com for more helpful resources, tools list. We've got an online store where you can find a few welding tools, the soapstone that you see me use in some of my videos. If you've got any questions, you can text me or Kayla at 405-643-7176. If for some reason we don't get back with you in a timely manner, and you've got a basic question about welding or the pipeline industry, you can literally, right here on YouTube, in the search bar, you can punch in your exact question, like down to the details, exactly what you're asking. And if we or somebody else has made a video about it, it should pop up. This way you can get your answer. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a great weekend. And remember, learn something every day.